This Beyond Clean Articles on the Go feature is titled Sterile Processing Travelers, a Primer, your mini guide to contract agency staffing in your SPD. Written by Hank Balch, founder and president of Beyond Clean. Reinforcements, ringers, productivity pushers, whatever you call them, when you have a sterile processing traveler show up at your door, it's usually for a pretty good reason. Reasons that can be as diverse as the particular departments who employ them. Whether it's plugging a hole from an unexpected retirement or getting the department through a season of spiking surgical volume, these knights of the sterile processing kingdom can spell the difference between service delivery and service disaster. Even though they are widely used by facilities and sterile processing leaders around the country, there hasn't been a lot of conversation discussing how to make the most out of your experience with an SPD traveler or any tips from sterile processing leaders on how to become an excellent SPD traveler yourself. Because the contexts for an agency staffing model are usually born out of critical staffing demands in a department, it's imperative that both of these teams understand each other's professional expectations if the relationship is to really succeed. Here's a helpful mini-guide to keep us both headed in the right direction. 1. Before you make the call, make the plan. SPD leaders, before you even reach out to your favorite staffing agency to call in the reinforcements, be sure you have a plan in place for how you will utilize these labor resources, how long you'll think you'll need them, and what the transition plan will look like when they leave. Because, yes, eventually they will have to leave. Don't make the rookie SPD mistake of bringing in travelers for a 13-week contract, only to wake up 13 weeks later to realize you're no closer to self-sufficiency than you were on day one. Sometimes you may not have a crystal clear idea of your staffing landscape three months out, and that's okay. But do yourself a favor and get that planning in motion prior to bringing in a new body. Your future self will thank you. Travelers. For as many reasons as there are to hire a traveler, there's probably twice as many reasons to become one. Whether it's to see the world, make some great money, or just extend your industry experience, you're going to want to have a clear vision for what is driving you to take the travel plunge. Not only will interviewing managers want to know this, your vision for traveling will also impact the assignments you choose to accept. If you're in it for the Benjamins, you may want an assignment in the middle of nowhere Alaska because it pays well. If you're wanting to see the world, Dubai may be a better choice. Your vision may not be this black and white, but you're going to want to have a guiding principle settled prior to putting yourself on the market. 2. Know who you are, find who you want. SPD leaders. Every department leader is different, and this means we are often looking for different things when we reach out to recruit travelers to our facility. Some may want to staff someone who has excellent instrument assembly skills to carry productivity in that area for a season. Others may really need a technician with superb customer service skills to handle OR communication as it relates to case carts and supplies. What's important to keep in mind here is that your department has a particular culture, and no matter where your new traveler comes from, they will be coming from a different culture. Your object as the department leader is to find a traveler whose professional culture is most compatible with your needs and the current state of your department. Many assignments can start off on the wrong foot if an SPD leader didn't know what they wanted, so, unsurprisingly, they weren't happy with what they got. Travelers. When you sign yourself up to travel, your company, if they're good at what they do, begins marketing you as an expert for hire. The important point here is that you actually fit the bill. There is nothing more frustrating for an SPD leader to be given a profile for a traveler who supposedly was an experienced sterile processing professional, only to meet them on day one to realize they don't know the difference between a biological and a chemical indicator. Likewise, if you can't explain the difference between a detergent and a disinfectant, you should not give yourself a five-point rating of decontamination expertise. Get your initial industry certification, CRCST, and more while you're at it, and then start selling yourself as the expert you are. This will ensure both you and your company keep your professional integrity, and there are no surprises when you walk into your next assignment. 3. Guide the ship, row the oars. SPD leaders, when a new traveler arrives to begin a contract at your facility, don't forget these folks are not robots. 
They may be highly trained and highly experienced technicians, but they are still human beings. Their onboarding process may have to be accelerated, but it needs to be there nonetheless. You should factor in adequate time for them to get acquainted with your department, staff, and particular way of doing things before asking them to work independently. And don't forget, whatever process or cultural issues that were already present in your department will most likely still be there when a traveler arrives. Be particularly cognizant of any permanent staff that may be tempted to be unwelcoming or overbearing towards these new additions to your team. Happy, well-adjusted travelers don't happen in spite of how you lead. They happen because of it. Travelers, keep in mind that nearly every department you walk into will be a department in need of immediate help. That's why you're there. Because of this, your aim should be to find ways to be productive for them as soon as possible. While your vision for traveling may be to see the world, broaden your network, and make some money, they hired you to do a job and do it well. Regardless of the productivity levels of the permanent employees around you, your focus should be to excel them all. The department is paying you a premium, not only for temporary assistance, but also for real-time, immediate results. Make it your mission to be low-maintenance, high-performing, and self-motivated. Here's a few other random traveler tips to keep in mind. What goes around comes around. If you treat your travelers well, it will pay dividends not only in their productivity, but also in the reputation your facility has in the traveling world. Travelers talk to each other, their recruiters talk to each other, and everyone knows the places that no one in their right mind would want to go. Don't become one of those places. We don't pay you to recruit. Dear travelers, we know you really like what you do, and we know that you enjoy sharing that love with others. However, remember that we did not hire you to become an internal recruiter out of our department. We're not saying you can't talk about becoming a traveler with our staff, but we do ask that you have the professional courtesy to do it after your assignment with us ends. Recommendations and ratings matter. When a traveler completes an assignment at your facility, take the time as a leader to complete their exit survey or review or write a recommendation for them. Many SPD leaders take these very seriously when making contract decisions, and many newer travelers covet high reviews of their work. They gave you 13 weeks of their life, if they did well, the least you can do is send them off with a well-deserved review. Hope this helps. After all, we're both in this together. Safe travels, my friends.